So a recent set of controversies has to do with the funding by the federal government about research that mixes human and animal uh, genetic material, sometimes called chimeras, uh, but there is actually a broader group of this. And again, the method is to think about a large number of cases. It's helpful to think about very different cases. So uh, to use some real cases, imagine you mixed uh, human uh, brain cells, so human brain stem cells in the embryonic stage, into a mouse to create a mouse with a humanized brain. Now, it wouldn't be a human brain. That's exactly the same. It's much smaller, for example, but has humanized elements. Another example is imagine you took a gorilla, treated the gorilla exactly as it is, but were able to generate a human-looking face, right? So a gorilla with a human face. How would we think about that entity? Third example, a uh, humanized Im immune system. Took a mouse, uh, and we do this, we have these at Harvard, for example, and created an immune system in order to test drugs, think about HIV, for example, that was humanized. So not the brain, but just uh, the immune system was very human-like. And last example is actually uh, valve replacements, heart valve replacements. So Jesse Helms, the senator, had a pig valve replacement years ago, right? So there's a piece of an animal in him, right? So these are four examples of different kinds of mixing. And the question is, which are okay, which are not okay, why can we generate some principles? So what might be wrong with mixing uh, human and animal parts? So one thing that might be wrong is that we think it will confuse the boundaries between humans and animals, right? That right now we have a pretty clear distinction. While many people love their dogs and their cats like members of the family, they are able to say, this is not a member of my family, this is not a member uh, that has the same rights as my family member. In a world where we had much more of a continuum between animals and human beings, those distinctions would become difficult. Now, just because they become difficult doesn't mean that that's wrong, right? It would just pose for us a new problem, and maybe it would illustrate a problem we should be thinking about altogether. So I'm not particularly sympathetic to that argument. Different argument, though, is to say human beings are particular kinds of being with particular kinds of capacities, and there's a dignity to being a human being. And if we were to mix uh, enough animal material into a human being, the thing that we would have would not be something new, but would be a human being that could not flourish as a human being, It'd be an undignified human being, a kind of entity uh, that is one that really uh, is unable to really experience what it is to be human. Now again, you might push on this and say, well, yes, that's true, they would not be uh, a human being, and they would not be necessarily have all the capacities of the human being. So think, imagine uh, having some of the capacities of a human being but being stuck in a rat body, for example. Sure, uh, there'd be ways in which you would not flourish as a human being, but why not think of you as flourishing as a new kind of entity, right? Uh, and in particular, you might actually think there might be an obligation to create some kinds of chimeras. So if, uh, for example, we think of uh, Big Bird from Sesame Street, sounds like a silly example, but I think it's a good one, right? Big Bird talks, Big Bird has friends, Big Bird goes to school, been in school a long time on Sesame Street, I guess, but he seems to have a pretty good life, right? Imagine we could take regular birds and turn them into big birds by doing something to them, right? Would we think of that as improving a little bird's life, or would we think about that as hurting a human being's life, right, through this mixture? Hard questions, right? But at least it might be possible that we think that we're doing animals a favor by doing this. And other answers might say it depends a lot on the specifics of the case, right? There are changes we could make to human beings by mixing in animal DNA that might make them uh, better, and there are changes we could make to human beings that might make them worse, and worse from a moral perspective. So for example, uh, if it turned out that there was, uh, to use an example in the literature, we could give human beings night vision so they could see at night like some animals through mixing in a little animal DNA. You might think that would be great, right? We could do more search and rescue, we'd be better drivers, there'd be less fatalities. On the other hand, if the result was to produce uh, human beings that had much stronger aggression or violence or claws or something like that, you might think that's worse because we're going to do more harm. And that would suggest that the answer about whether we ought to have chimeras or not and what kind can only be answered in a particularistic way about thinking about a particular case. I will say, and this is kind of referencing some work by my friend Hank Greeley at Stanford, that there are particular kinds of changes which from a sociological perspective seem to bother us more. Uh, and he describes them as kind of brains, balls, and faces. So brains, turns out we're very disturbed by the idea of human brains or humanized brains in animals. Much more disturbed by the humanized brain mice than we are by the humanized immune system mice, for example. The other is balls, 
we tend to be very nervous when we think about the idea, and this is kind of crazy and out there. Imagine you could create an animal that had the ability to reproduce its, uh, its gonads, its reproductive system was human. So that you'd have animals uh, mating and producing human beings and animals, right? That's the kind of thing that I think disturbs a lot of people as an idea. And the last is faces. The idea of having animals with human faces, for example, I think just disturbs a lot of people. Even though you might say a face is a face. But it's a marker of human beings and the way we relate to each other. And I think there's just a strong sociological pushback against that.